Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. As they do that, that's part of your job as a police officer to deal with that. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think this is this is the hard hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because mm-hmm. racism doesn't look like it did in the fifties doesn't mean it went away. Period. Now, I think where a lot of people get frustrated is you have certain media outlets, certain famous personalities that seem to drive it in a way like you can't go outside and go get your mail without being shot, right? And they, they make it so extreme mm-hmm. to where it's like, all right, man, if you're on the other end of that, you're digesting that, you're like, dude, really? Yeah, or the, on, uh, I don't know who said, I can't remember who said it. I don't know if it was LeBron, but someone said we're just being hunted every day. When Yeah, LeBron said we're being, we're being hunted every day. And, you know, my only response to, to LeBron, and I like LeBron, that's, that's like my dude. Mm-hmm. My response yeah, to him is, right <laughs> I'm not, bro. Yeah. I'm not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's it's and even if I was, guess what? Well, you, you're going to, your prey has teeth. Damn it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to leave it at that. But my, my, and, and, my I don't, and I don't I don't believe I just you know what? I mean, and I'm sorry, Kevin, I think you're making a good point. I don't want to cut it off, but I don't feel I don't feel and you guys could tell me whether you do or you don't. I don't feel like we're being hunted every day. I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, to me, it's not a, it's not an issue of hunting. That's what I mean by mm-hmm. things can be extrapolated so much that mm-hmm. it, it just makes me tired of hearing it. Right. Mm hmm. I think on the other side of it, though, because you can have two things can be true, right? Okay. But then because of that frustration or that oversaturation, you know, like especially when people get up there and, and, and just say things that are outlandishly just just a bit of a push. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it does not mean that there aren't factual things that are occurring. Has anybody stopped to think maybe to themselves, A, why was he so comfortable doing what he was doing on camera? Maybe could be a lot of reasons, mm-hmm. but can you say that he he didn't value the life up under him? Maybe he did or did not value him because he was black. I think people need to stop telling other people how to feel when they have life experiences different than yours. Mm-hmm. You don't know what it was like for me dealing with cops when I grew up. I've had police officers three times point guns at me. Mm-hmm. Three times. Mm-hmm. Three. You know what? They were all black. None of them were white. Mm-hmm. They're all black. But I'm still able to say firsthand that there are not only uh, black officers who, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about having personal conversations, mm-hmm. will tell you they don't value the black community, period. They will tell you that. Oh, for right? Sure. For sure. And there are other, other people that because they don't understand, they don't have empathy. Because they don't understand, they take everything you do as a sign of aggression. And it's not. It's just the way we talk, man. Calm down. You know, so it's a it's a lot of education to be there, but you can't tell people that there aren't some factual truths to this thing and stop telling people that systems won't cover up when anybody is murdered, right? But it's, but even when black men are murdered, look at Ahmaud Arbery, right? Like, look at that situation. That was horrible. And people want to say, oh, take race out of it. We can have a discussion where I say, I feel it's racist. You say, I don't feel it was racist. But do we both agree it was wrong? As long as we both come to that, I'm cool. It doesn't matter how you feel, how I feel. Do we agree that that man should be alive? So stop telling people that they aren't allowed to have a feeling about something. And this would be the exact same community that then turns around and tells people, well, all gun control is racist. Well, as then as soon as I say, well, the white dude that just passed that gun law like President Trump, hey, well, I thought all gun control was racist and there's a system of the oppressors. Does that make him racist? Everything's not about race, dude. <laughs> and like, come on, man. Like, like, let's really be able to have a conversation about that. So I think that mm-hmm. if you value your fellow Americans, I get that we're frustrated with the race baiters, like the true race of bait. Mm-hmm. I get that we're frustrated with those people. I, I totally get and understand. At the same time, if you trust, and I'm not saying I'm the I'm the guy that can call out, I'm not saying that at all. But if you can trust my word, if you agree with me on 80% of the things I say, why would I say that with you denounce me? Yeah. How come you can't value my opinion and feelings about that just as much as you value them about gun control is the problem? Everybody needs gun education. Historical lessons when I provide them. When you when you you said earlier, Hank, how about we talk from our generational experience to their generational experience, right? Mm-hmm. 
Well, look, man, I can tell you firsthand. Our police chief, right? And I'm using chief because you set a tone. We had a police chief here named uh, Chief Mokwa, Joseph Mokwa. Joseph Mokwa, this was not a rumor. <laughs> this was factual. Joseph Mokwa was a detective at one time, and Mokwa would jump out, take your dope, right? Which he should have just arrested you for. Mm-hmm. But he would take your dope, take your money from the dice game, okay? Then charge you percentages off your pack, and will come and collect. He was known for doing that. And he became he the police chief? <laughs> <laughs> police chief of one of the major metropolitan cities in this country. Well, if you're the chief and you came up through the ranks like that, who's your command staff? Because you get to appoint them. Mm-hmm. What directives have you given your command staff to flow down to the officers? And then when you toss in something like the 1994 crime bill and all the things it allowed, mm-hmm. what what government protection do you have to go out and execute these things? So stop telling people that they're not they're not in their right to say. I feel this was about race and then denounce everything else they say. If you don't feel it was about race, be like, hey, man, I might not see it the same way you see it, but I can't agree that that American was treated wrong and move on. Yeah. Well, and move on. And so what about if we what about if we're looking at a story in South Africa where the black people are running everything and they decide to go to a white guy's farm and take his farm from him? And if he resists, they kill him. Is that not about race either? It is racial. Yeah. Of course it is. And, 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 we, can, and I mean, we can say that now. The people in South Africa would say it's because you invaded our land and you took our land and we're fighting for it back. Okay. Well, I, I think that the, the the white people, let's just say, that were just born there, that are just working the land, like, I didn't, you know, what's up, man? what I do? Uh, yeah, we're going to take this from you. No, you can't have my land. Well, we're going to kill you, white boy. Yeah, he can say, I was killed in attack because of my race. Mm-hmm. And who would tell him that, it, that he wasn't? Mm-hmm. Right, it, it, that'll be a factual truth. Yeah, does it mean that the people shouldn't necessarily want their land back? No. Does it mean that maybe they could go about a better way of getting it back? Sure. Mm-hmm. Do I agree with the innocent murder of anybody? No. But can I say that yeah, that's probably driven because of the color of your skin, dude? Because if a black dude owned this land, they probably wouldn't have came and took it from him. Yeah. Yeah. I think unfortunately, not everyone has it, it, perspective. Man, messes us up, right? Mostly as human beings, we see from our own perspective. We don't get to see from other people's perspective and think about things. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to do with all of this stuff. Because I think it's it's more complicated. And if we really, really, really want to fix anything, we have to look at things that we don't want to look at. And a lot of times, so race is one of these things that m- most of us, sometimes yes. I don't want to look at it. Sometimes you don't want to look at it. You know, it's just one of these things that no one wants to talk about because it's kind of like a boogeyman. And it's scary and you don't want to get in trouble. You don't want to hurt people's feelings whenever you get into it. So therefore, we never fix it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, if, if I can jump in here, it's, yeah. it's always interesting because, I, you know, I come from a – I'm Puerto Rican. So I come from a Hispanic background. So sometimes – and not only that, because I'm a military brat, my dad was in the Navy. I've lived in different parts of the world and different parts of the country. So I've always seen things – uh, race has always been really interesting for me because, you know, in Puerto Rico, everybody looks Hispanic people all look totally different. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people think that Hispanic people or Puerto Rican people, you know, you're brown, you're you're like more tan skin or whatever. But there's blue uh, blonde hair, blue eyed Puerto Ricans out there. My dad is darker skin than I am. I've got green eyes. I'm a little lighter complexion. Uh, you know, my brother looks a little bit different. So. You know, it, it's a little bit different from uh, from our perspective, especially, you know, Puerto Rico is part of the United States. But when you come to the mainland, you see and you hear about the history of obviously everything that's happened, especially primarily between white and black people. And as a Hispanic, you kind of get both perspectives. It's like on the outside looking in. And, uh, you know, that's what really makes it interesting, because sometimes you get co-opted by one side or the other. And I know that's one of the struggles that I've found with that when it's convenient, sometimes one side likes to take you and claim you. Oh, you're Hispanic. <laughs> we're yeah. we're, we're going to take you today because it's convenient for us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're going to mm-hmm. we're, we're going to take you there. Uh, and then mm-hmm. other times it's like, oh, well, you're like a light hen, uh, a light skinned Hispanic. So you don't count, you know, so, you know, you're 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 there with the white dude. So I've always seen that. So race does mean something to me i've seen the differences i've seen how people from any race can use that against you or try to prop you up and say that you're a victim just because you're not white 
or or for whatever reason. Yeah. So it's 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 always crazy. And living around the world, I also see how different countries look at race uh, uh, in totally different perspectives in the United States. But how some of them have the same problems that we do. Mm-hmm. Like the Asians, they're all racist towards one another. You know, uh, Japanese people, Koreans, and and Chinese people, they hate each other. And from our perspective, we would probably say, well, that would be like Europeans hating one another. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all the same race. How can that be? Race is because a human condition, has, man. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. It has, sometimes it's just as simple of that dude has stuff that you don't have, and I want to take it from them, or and I don't like them because of it. Yeah. Um, I know this is going to sound real crazy, but it reminds me of uh, an episode of Rick and Morty which I don't know if everyone has seen Rick and Morty, but literally there's these aliens, they're all blue, right? All the aliens are blue. But there's a part of it where they realize that some of them have uh, like extended nipples, (laughs) you know, and then some of them have like, there's a different kind of nipple that they have and they have a race war over the nipples. So as ridiculous as that sounds, if that happened to us, if we were all blue, we would find a reason. Well, like this guy has a little white stripe, and he thinks he's better than me. You know, well, I mean, no matter what, this is what we would do to each other because it's our crazy human condition. Well, look at the fights that people get into over AKs and ARs or 1911s and Glocks, and some mm-hmm. people get really pissed off about it. Yeah. So yeah. if if we can get that angry about such trivial things like that, of course, big issues we're going to kill each other about. Yeah. So, but but at the end of the day, if we want to make see, I think what a lot of this has to do is with time. We can't get rid of the of all the, the the issues that human beings have. But but we have time, and we can make things better, right? And I think you know over time in America, things are getting better. Maybe if you go to some other countries around the world, you will see that they deal with this in some ways better. They no no one's got a hundred percent cure for this. But in time here, we can make these things better if we if we actually sit down, talk about all of this, figure it out, and then hold each other to to the standards, right? But it can't be convenient, right? This is the thing that like some people want to flip in and out of this for convenience, you know. And I think that's what's the thing. So now here, we're, if we, I just want to bring it back to the to the whole conversation, which Kevin, like I said, we've had this before about, you know policing in america right let's have that conversation again with all of this happening it's not just it's it's happening over and over again in america in lots of different ways what do you guys think is the solution for this for me i think a full reset needs to happen what what do you guys think can i say something and this is a question for Mm -hmm. hank you and uh katie especially katie just because he was in law enforcement Mm -hmm. um the blue code. You see, do you know what I mean? As far as the blue code, Katie, are you talking about the thin like blue the line? Brotherhood. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, it's the, the same, brotherhood. It's the same thing as the G code on the street. It's that, right. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of them. You saw there was a white man, uh, and then there was the Asian or you know, uh, gentleman too. Different race, um, but they all had to stick together because of that G code, the blue code, or the blue line. Mm-hmm. Talk about that, because that, that, you know, that's kind of a um, topic where, you know, they all kind of play that role, because if you don't, you kind of feel like that, you know, the outcast, you like, hey, he's not really for us. There was a cop that were killed because of, you know, not following that uh, that mm-hmm. code. So go ahead and speak about that, because, I mean, I feel like, you know, the audience may want to hear. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go jump ahead. in there? Well, I, I would say this. is really for KD is and there, uh, Hank. But go ahead. Is there a blue code? Yeah, it's called the thin blue line. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Uh, now, I, I was told something today. I wasn't in the room when this was said, but I was mm-hmm. told something today that was said by a police commander out of the Seattle, Washington area. I don't even know if he worked for the Metropolitan, but around that area. Mm-hmm. And they were at a conference, um, and he said, uh, I love police, and I'm always going to support my officers. Um, so I'm not diminishing their lives. But when people say blue lives matter, they forget the rest of that sentence. And I'm just listening to what somebody's conveying this to me. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, he, everybody in the room was puzzled. Cops, everybody. They're like, what? Yeah. Is there, like, is there another part to that sentence? You know, he's like, blue lives matter last. Everybody's like, what? He's like, it doesn't mean that police officers should die. Now, this is a police commander. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is when you put on this badge, 
you are going out to make sure that innocent people make it home safe even if you don't. Yeah. So your life does matter. It just matters less. The only thing is above is a criminal. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless you get to the point where you have to save the criminal. Right. He's now a victim. Mm -hmm. So in, in that thinking that that points out a lot, but everybody doesn't share that mindset. Look, every every cop that I've seen that has spoken up, I never forget we had this brother that spoke up against the mayor, called the mayor out on some some, some BS. And you know what they did to him? They they gave a cop what we call a black hole. They put him on desk duty, right? And he just sat on a desk all day long, greeting people into the police station until he finally left. There have been other cops that have uh, came out and said the right thing, and all of a sudden they had investigations open into them about something totally different, where they had to lead the force. So yeah, it's a cold out there. I think that um, most jobs do have codes of some sort where you have each other's back. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you won't for some of the small stuff. I think the code should expire once you are trampling on the rights of people. That's when you should say, look, man, I got you up until you stick your knee in the back of somebody's neck for eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I got you to that mm -hmm. point. Look, if I need to if I need to say that you were on this traffic stop with me while you was really over your other baby mama house, I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. If I need to run, if I need to cover for you because you ran cold through a red light, caused a uh, minor traffic accident, and you know you weren't supposed to be pursuing, but the car got away, nobody was seriously hurt. I got you. I, I mean that stuff is real, right? Have your boy right. back. I'm not saying don't do that. Right. But when you get to the point to, hey yo, I'm gonna keep it quiet if you murder somebody, and I'm not gonna stop it. Nah, you, yeah. You passed. Nah. You went too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You went too far. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.